Lads, a quick word from the sponsor of the video today in BrewDog. If you're following the channel for a while, you know very well I've been working with Manscaped for ages now. Manscaped, the best in the game for below the waist grooming, AKA shaving your balls, shaving your nuts. Out of all of the fantastic Manscaped products, one of my favorites has always been the Boxers and they have just brought out the Boxers 2.0. I love how they put 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Everything is just the, the next one is just the next point though always improving adapting improvising overcoming the boxers 2.0 all part of the ultimate performance package 4.0 if it's up at 4.0 you know it's good comes in the perfect travel bag the shed you've got the lawnmower 4.0 the absolute goat greatest of all time the weed whacker for the hard to reach areas up the schnoz in the ears wherever else you want to put it crop preserver crop reviver they're essential you know the drill lads go to manscaped.com use the code pints20 to get 20 percent off plus free shipping How are you lads, what's the crack? I am at BrewDog in Dublin. They have brought out a new stout called BrewDog Black Heart Stout. We went through this before with a new stout over in the UK, in London. Now it's BrewDog's time to go up against the big boys. Looks online as if there, some people bring out new stouts, they say we're not trying to compare it to Guinness. Looks, I think I saw a TikTok video or something where they were trying to do like a bit of a blind taste test, Guinness and this Black Heart Stout. They're going up against the big boys. Let's see how they fare. BrewDog Black Stout review coming in. Five, four, three, two, one. glass clean first and then you don't dry the glass no and do you we it's called a refreshing glass uh, I know from experience that's always a dry glass for for Guinness but um, we refresh all our all our glasses here clean it just enough, helps yeah. to get rid of yeah. anything that might be in the glass already probably settles a little bit quicker than Guinness um, what would be the reason for that it's just a slightly the ingredients like? it's just ingredients yeah, yeah. To do is, it also depends on the bar itself. Sometimes beers settle different in different cellars, temperature. Okay, fair Glassware enough. is probably a big thing. Our glass, yeah. obviously, the glassware is much different from and the so glass. It's gotten out of 30 spots here, it's been bumped right up to number one. Of course. <laughs> that's, uh, that's big shoes to fill. What, yeah. what got put off the top spot? It was actually the, the previous day called oh, Jet, Jet. So we originally had a beer called Jet Blackheart, Jet which Black, was okay. an oatmeal and vanilla milk stout. Well, I have loads of questions for you, but I won't ask them here when I'm only focusing the point. Right lads, here we are, Brewdog Outpost. I'm going to take a sip first, but one thing I would notice, you saw what he did with the glass. For me, unfortunately, that kind of leads to this sort of wet ringage below that gold double line above this on the word black. So, yeah, and then a couple of bubbles are in the head. Nothing major, but a couple of bubbles. Mad old glass, to be honest with you. You kind of have to make it a bit different, don't you, to stand out from the crowd. Slancher, lads. Brewdog, black heart. Initially, before I even drank it, uh, I, I'm going to preface this by saying I am the least craft beer person in the world. If you're watching the channel long enough, you see me do craft stout reviews, craft beer reviews. I've no time for them, just personally. I mean, this place is an abs this place is absolutely class. Obviously, there is a market there, but just not for me personally. So it's always a bit of a tricky one if I'm going to come here and review like a bit of a craft stout. But the vibe I get is that they're... I think I captured it all on camera there with Paul. The vibe I get is that they're kind of trying to make this a bit more of a regular stout to bring in, possibly with the idea of, let's say, me and my mates are planning on where to go on the weekend. 
and someone says, let's go to Brewdog, and I'm like, well, I don't like craft beer. And then they say, well, they have this stout, it's not too far off Guinness, maybe that's the whole idea. Um, but yeah, initially, before you even drink it, you do get a strong, a much stronger smell than you would from the likes of, um, the likes of Guinness. You wouldn't, with a Guinness, you put it up to your nose, not that strong, that's why I like Guinness, because I'm a basic bitch, and it just does not smell that strong. Um, but yeah, no matter, the thing I always have a problem with with craft beers and stouts is that the aftertaste just tastes like arse in your mouth. Not that I know what arse in my mouth tastes like, or do I? We'll never know. I mean, it's very drinkable. Just a slight more of a stronger twang than a Guinness. Uh, I'm not sure what percent it is. I'll put it on the screen right here. Yeah, in terms of drinkable, I kind of thought I was going to come and it was going to be shy. Like, just not drinkable at all. Like some of those craft stouts I've had out of the shop. Like if you were watching my channel during the big C O V, um, I I would go to like O'Brien's off license every day and just gra grab like a new random stout or a cologne, or cologne uh, craft beer, and I just hated every one of them. I always just thought they had that same real twang off of them. But this is quite good. I feel like this is a bit what Heineken are trying to do with Island's Edge, Brewdog are trying to do with this, trying to bring in the market of Guinness drinkers who obviously they don't have Guinness here but they'll be willing to come here and drink a few pints of this stout. Another point to be made is this is their, I think it's their only stout, they used to have one because, they used to have one called, it, he said it on the camera, um, he said it in the last clip when he was pouring it, but he said it was like an oatmeal milk stout. People like me have no interest in that sort of bollocks, so I def, it definitely feels like they've replaced that, They're, they've put it straight up to number one on the feckin' taps, feckin' lines or whatever so definitely for me they're trying to push it as you know you can drink a few pints with bring that mate aka me with you if you're a bunch of craft beer heads bring that lad who doesn't like trying things aka me and he'll sit there in the corner and still probably moan that it's not guinness but he'll be all right so no surprise you're not going to get any shtick on that because they washed the glass right before so the glass if the glass isn't dry I'm not a scientist, but I can't imagine, like, what, how's it meant, how's the cream meant to stick to the edge of the glass if it's wet? Um, although the argument could be made that once the Guinness is poured inside a dry glass, then it's wet. Would I go as far as saying I like it? I would say that. And I have to always stress when I do these kind of singular videos, lads. I put up on Instagram saying, I hear Brewdog have a new stout. They reached out to me and said, come on down. And they, they actually said, we'll give you like a 50 pound voucher. I said, no voucher needed. Man of the people pays for this by himself, even though I still haven't paid for it yet. But one thing I did not realize was how expensive the pints are in there. I'm gonna put it on the screen. I think it was like 780 or something is like the baseline for all of their pints. But to be fair, it is in this district with all these sort of multi-billion dollar companies indeed and Googles and all that's around. So yeah, all the office lads rocking up here after work for a few cheeky pints. So whatever I say, I hope you believe is genuine and honest. Yeah, very obviously not Guinness, not that it's meant to be Guinness, but I couldn't drink as many pints of that as I could Guinness. I could drink three or four of them probably, whereas you know yourself, hard man alert, you could probably put away I don't know, more than three or four pints of Guinness in a day. But after three or four of them, you'd probably be a bit, ugh. But it's quite light, very drinkable, very flavoursome. Nothing in the flavours is too overpowering for me. Not, I was going to say not mad on the glass, but it is very easy to hold. I do like that. This is a glass little yoke, like something they would have drank port out of in like the 15th century, but it's cool. It's a nice, it's a good product. It's gone down fairly swimmingly, I have to say. Just, yeah, not as thick, not as creamy as Guinness. I'd say slightly lighter, very much, like pretty much as smooth as a pint of Guinness, I would say. I'd say as a pint of Guinness, there's good pints of Guinness and there's bad pints of Guinness. I'm comparing this to a very good one. To be fair, a little bit of shtick, not too bad. Yeah, pretty good product. I am I think it's better than what I anticipated. Yeah, slightly, I'm getting a slightly smoky flavor. I'm not really getting much of it. I'm just trying to compare it to like, say, Murphy's Beamus. Murphy's Beamish, Island's Edge, Guinness. I've had all of them recently in that blind taste test. I'd say it's probably most like Murphy's, like it's smoky enough, but it's not like, it's not smoky like a 20 John Player Blue smoky like a pint of Beamish would be. Um, it's, I'm not, your man might tell me there's notes of chocolate in it. There probably is, there's notes of chocolate in every stout, I think. 
but I'm not really getting the chocolatey sweetness. I'm getting pretty much Guinness with a with a slightly smokier um, smell and aftertaste and just overall notes of smokiness. What's that, Jim Carrey? Smoking. I, I'll tell you like what I got from it, and you'll probably tell me I'm in terms of the notes and all that, because uh, I always no. say it's like Guru Moyers. <laughs> right, lads, I'm here with Paul Markey. Job title, Paul? Uh, GM of the bar. Big boss. Yeah, well. The gaffer. Yeah. <laughs> right, should we have a sip? Yeah. Sancho. So my extremely unprofessional review, I basically said, didn't think it was a million miles from Guinness, but very much even before you drink it, um, and again, it's not as if you're trying to make Guinness, just so, so we know. <laughs> but before you drink it, um, you would you get the smell that it's different already. Yeah. But in terms of smoothness, creaminess, I'd say Guinness would have a little bit thicker. And don't worry about those things; these mics should be grand. Got <laughs> um, Just a little bit kind of smokier, and I know there's meant to be notes of like chocolate and all stout. I didn't really. I'm only going off of like I did a blind taste test a couple of weeks ago. Had like Guinness, Island's Edge, Beamish, Murphy's, I had them everything, so yeah. I'm trying to compare it. And I was like, the most I could compare it to was possibly a Murphy's, a little bit smoky, even though not as smoky as a Beamish. Yeah. Didn't really get the chocolatey sweetness like an Island's Edge. Yeah. But genuinely, like, I, I, I'm here in front of you, I can't bullshit you because it's going out. <laughs> I did um, have good things to say about it. Yeah. So I saw a, I was trying to do some sort of research and I saw a clip on was it TikTok, was like the Evening Standard in the UK or something, and they said the CEO of BrewDog challenged us to taste the difference between Guinness and Black Heart. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, there was, a, there was two different things. We did um, outside Twickenham for a rugby match about two weeks ago, it was. Yeah. Uh, we did a blind taste test where we had Guinness and Black Heart side by side. Yeah. It was just in small, um, small takeaway cups. It was like just, I think it was maybe, maybe a mouthful. We just had people go up and just blind, completely blind taste it. Yeah. And, so, uh, in terms of like marketing, then it's like you can obviously say whatever you want to say, <laughs> but it's like it's it kind of comes across that you're trying to make a product that people can be like in their minds, oh, it's actually similar to Guinness. I can go there, I can drink it because I was saying I I I'm not a craft beer person at all, hence why I've never been here. Yeah. And if my mates were to say, let's go to Brewdog, I'd probably be like, oh, I don't really like any of the stuff. But now I'd be like, oh, well, I can go there and drink three or four pints of that stuff yeah. and I'll be, I'll be grand. So yeah. is there some sort of element of trying to... Yeah, so it's kind of like, it is not, like, especially in the UK, it's slightly different. I think there is a market, there's a percentage of the market share you can get from, in the UK, mm. from Black Heart can, from the Guinness drinkers. Yeah. Here, it's a slightly different kind of okay, beast, yeah. right? So like, they're not as We're loyal not, in the UK. Exactly, yeah, like I think, but like, it's something similar like here in, in the UK is you go into any pub and what is 75% of the taps? Lagers. Lagers, yeah. Coors, Peroni, Carlsberg, Heineken, Budweiser. Like, you can probably count eight or nine. Yeah, There's yeah. There's always only one stout. Now, very small, so we'll have a Beamish or Murphy's in, especially if you go down, down to Cork or further. But no, it's a good point. Why it's not, pretty much why always not have, a, just have a, another one? Yeah. You know? which is their real big thing in, in the UK, is like, this is going to start pushing into other bars, not just is that, Yeah, not just in Brewdog. It'll, it'll eventually get there. I'm sure right now it's just like, let's get into our bars, yeah. let's get people and drinking And for it. Irish viewers, I, again, I, I didn't know, I just thought this was like, Brewdog was just this place, but it's actually a UK, yeah, so it's, it's a, a UK it's a, company. It's a Scottish, Scottish it was a brewery set up in Scotland in 2007 by two lads and their dog, and uh, <laughs> kind of just Brood it's dog, snowballed, yeah. yeah. But there's yeah. loads of them in the UK, and this is the only yes, one in Ireland. 80 plus in the UK. This uh, We have one in Cork, okay. uh, ourselves here. There is plans for a second one in Dublin, I think. Yeah. Um, we've, got, we've got 130 around the world. We've okay. opened in India, Australia, America. That's gas. There's me thinking Europe. this is just some little <laughs> pub in the, on the Grand Canal. Like, well, that's man, it. Like, like, the size of the place. Talk with you to glass. Yeah, so what goes uh, into that like? Like it's, it's it's called a Craftmaster glass. Okay. It's, uh, basically, you kind of just want a slightly, you want yeah. something to stand out, you know? Yeah, like definitely. It's a very cool out. looking glass. Um, it's, didn't, want it, go, didn't want to go for a tulip because then it'll be obviously a little bit too. I know, yeah. too but does all this fucking bollocks of like breathability and all this shit come into it, or you're just like we want to stand out and look cool? Like let's I'm be sure, I'm sure people in Brewdog want me to say it's all about. Yeah, 
aromas and yeah. flavor, but like Notes. I, well, you're on the wrong channel for that. <laughs> so just say it looks. I cool. personally think it just looks very cool yeah. and look and it stands out. Like yeah. you see that walking, you see a tray of them going around. You're like, oh okay. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you see them in. It's kind of like something from like hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Like, like but and I initially it's kind of like um, initially I was like yeah no, I don't like it and then. It's 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 so it it's so easy to, <laughs> to hold because yeah. it just comes out in the middle, which yeah. is quite rare for a glass like yeah. to come out that much. Yeah. Um, and then is it, it it is the only you said there was a previous stout here. Do yeah, you so always just have one stout. Um, we always have like we chop and change, but like it depends. Like we have guest beers on as well, so we have different beers from around Ireland yeah. or in Europe or whatever. Okay. Some of them like, generally in the winter time we'll start getting a bit more stout, but now it's kind of slightly getting a bit better weather. Mm. Uh, you can kind of venture to a little bit more, but yeah, this will be our only dry stout that we have on at the moment, like a good solid stout. And uh, we have another one that's at eight and a half percent, so that's more yeah. for, the, for the beer guys. And well, like, would you guys take? Like, I, I don't know how involved you personally would be in this in the making of this product, but like, would there be say inspiration taken from all the bigger stouts, and or are you guys just literally like we don't? It's not like you're tasting that now, so you're just like, let's just make what we like. I think it was just, let's make a very sessionable That's a great Irish word. dry stout. Yeah. With previous beer, which was called Jet Black Heart, so it's a little bit confusing. With Jet Black Heart, it was, it was more on the sweeter side. Mm. It had very, very uh, strong notes of vanilla and like coffee and chocolate. Yeah. It was a milk stout as well, so I had these lactose sugars into it to kind of give it a bit of body, and it's all and, vegan and it, either. It would appeal to the people who like the normal people coming in here who are trying a glass of this and trying yeah. a glass of that. Whereas the word, I don't think you'd use the word sessionable for many, I wouldn't personally use yeah. the word sessionable for many craft stouts or, or craft beers or whatever. Yeah. I'm sure you probably would. But that's for, like, I'm just such a basic person. <laughs> I just, you give me something where I can drink five of them. Like that's, I am, that's, I'm not looking up there again. That is I'm the main just, thing. You just, yeah. this, that's, I think that was the main goal is to make something that, when you have something like a sweet stout, you have a pint, you may go back for a second, then you're like thinking, oh, maybe I'll try something else because it's just a little bit too sweet. Whereas with this, yeah. and we've seen it like, sales of this, so we we did over 300 pints last week yeah. of just this, compared to the week before, I think we did 150 of the other stuff. So instantly, okay. what I think that mainly is, is just people that are going back for more yeah. because it is just yeah. very approachable beer. So like 10 lads having 30 pints of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, well overall I think you're definitely onto something if you are, like again, I'll always be honest, if you're if you're trying to get the market of lads who don't wouldn't usually be arsed yeah. with all the craft stuff, you've got a product there that is very easy to drink, still yeah. slightly more kind of notes and aromas and a bit stronger tasting than yeah, basic it's Guinness, but it's very still very drinkable. What's the uh, percentage? 4.1. 4.1. So it's very much so Guinness is 4.2. Yeah. yeah, so, so very much the same. Close. The ingredients are is where it mainly differs. So we use six different malts. Okay. So like uh, we use like chocolate malt, extra dark malt, and a few other ones. But like they would be the main ones. Mm. Whereas Guinness use just two malts, I believe, and it's just pale and roasted. Okay. And then the big thing is uh, is the hops we use. We use a single hop called Simcoe hop, and that kind of gives it that kind of bitter edge to it. Yeah, okay. Whereas I think Guinness I think Guinness actually use hop hop extract. Right. Uh, don't quote like, I don't I know. I should know that so <laughs> I don't that's know. always well. the funny I think <laughs> after doing this for like three, four years I'd know all that stuff. So. Yeah. I well, I'm as sure much I'm as like, I did the day I, I only do that because I did my research as yeah, well. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so I think that's where you get like a little bit more of the bitter edge to, to yeah. this. Yeah. Um, but again yeah like it, it's slightly slightly thinner than Guinness, but I don't think that really takes away from too much of it. No, um, so it's, I wouldn't say it's watery. Like I wouldn't, no, no, I wouldn't go no. that far. Yeah, um, but I think compared to maybe some of the other states that have come out recently, I think, um, like with Island's Edge and um, I think something else came out recently. I can't remember what it was, but like no, we're not here. Like that was, that was the main thing. We're not <laughs> going after the Guinness market. Like yeah, yes, we'll try and. Like, they are a little bit, but <laughs> in the UK, <laughs> <laughs> over here it's slightly different. We are we, like we're going after a percent. Like, why not go after a percentage of markets? Yeah, like, like a percentage of the market could be. Yeah, and and so you like the the brew dog. I know you said about going into other pubs in the UK. Is that like obviously, if I would say, is that 
a wish for Ruda, clearly it would be, but is that like a realistic goal to get into other pubs? Yeah, like Guinness there, Blackheart there. There's a lot of pubs in the UK that don't have Gin don't have Guinness at all, you know? Like, yeah. But whereas here, like you have to have Guinness. Like just like I think I think there's ten pubs in Dublin City that don't have Guinness. Because they have their own one. Oh okay. So like Porterhouse, Galway Bay Brewery. Yeah. Uh, because if you're, like, yeah, like if you have a pub in Dublin, you don't have Guinness. It's just like you're gonna get so many tourists going in and yeah. be like, like find the Guinness. Like I've worked in craft beer bars since 2015 now. Yeah. And like, it's been what's that? It's been that many years now of getting asked. The most frequent question. Yeah, that's so funny. Luckily, like it's mad here. Uh, we we very rarely get that actual question, but we always get what do you have that's similar to Guinness. Yeah, well, you'd want to be a bit of an idiot to come in here. Like, what? it's literally, <laughs> uh, no offense to anyone who's probably done it, but like, it's different if you just go with, like, I actually went to the porterhouse years ago at the start when I was doing the reviews. Because someone said, go to the porterhouse. And I was like, find a Guinness. They were like, we don't have Guinness. I didn't might, it might have been you. <laughs> <laughs> and they were trying to convince me of what I was like, well, I have a channel called the Guinness Guru, so I'm just going to head. <laughs> Last question, have you tried Island's Edge? No. You haven't? I ha well, sorry, I tried it. I tried it. Um, just a taster of it, um, but I think thoughts. It was, I don't know. It was, it was a bit. I don't know. It's like say what's on your mind, Paul. It was a bit, it was a bit just. It was too much going on. I think. Okay. For it to be a, an approachable stout. Yeah. Um, I think. I think knowing that it's come from. Heineken as well, kind of. Yeah, and I think they maybe the looked at Guinness who were like, right, we need to make something that's very much different to this, but yeah. more drinkable. And like they were quite obviously going like as a rival, whereas oh. we're not. We're going as uh, an alternative. Yeah, no, that they way, are literally you know. trying to like. That's their problem. They're trying to like take down Guinness. It's like it's, you're just not going to do that no. ever. Yeah, especially I, in this I country. Just don't, I just yeah, I don't really understand yeah. like the whole push against it now. I know that they, they, I can see them. They've popped up pubs everywhere but yeah and they're completely they changing last. the market and all that so we'll so. see um last thing I, i'm trying to always develop my actual skills as a say a guru connoisseur like when i drink this what actual notes and aromas should i be experiencing can kind you like, say three or four words yeah like I, straight off for me it would be kind of chocolate and coffee but like not like coffee coffee it's kind of like mm. It sounds bad, but like the used grounds, you know, when you... Is that, but is that what gives it the smokiness? Yeah. Like, is that, there well, well, what gives it the smokiness is, is smoke the, being put into it? Yes, or? no, so roasted barley, so like... Roasted barley, yeah, so we, we, roasted to is get, to get the To get the colour, you roast your barley, basically. Yeah. So you, you, you basically cook it. Yeah. Um, and that's what gives it the colour, but also gives it that kind of... Kind of like toast, like kind of... Yeah, dark, yeah, I get dark you. toast. I get you, yeah. um, And kind of that very small bit of coffee. Chocolate, I get quite a bit of chocolate from it. Um, but the big thing is, and I think I only learned this recently, like when you talk about coffee and chocolate and all, it's not like they're putting a fucking dairy milk into it. Exactly. It's how much you roast the, yeah. the, the barley, is exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. yeah That's like probably I, I, the smartest thing I've ever said on this channel. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like, at, if you roast it this, mo this amount, it, it's chocolate. If you roast it this amount, it's coffee. It's yeah. like, I genuinely would have just thought there's like, cacao beans being fired into it and all this shit so that's <laughs> but in fairness there is some beers that do have that like yeah. there's beers that have mad things in them yeah. you know like caramel and pecans and yeah. all these mad stuff that goes into it and like that's all so that's great. when that's... I go oh, <laughs> too crafty for me absolute pleasure yeah thank absolutely. you very much no worries not a bad product lads there you go brilliant very natural